Do you consider yourself a bodybuilder? Recreational bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. Natty. Natty. Always. Always. Yeah. 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 A little bit of creatine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow. Everything the light touches. Everything. Let's start with all the good things. Super strong. Very humble. <laughs> World's strongest man. Listen. IFBB pro. I'm just the donut guy. The underappreciated, great at nothing, good at most things. Great entertainment. What's this one? YouTube video. 100 bucks. Right on. Yeah, nice job. Funny and witty. Wow. Get out. I really, like, I, I actually felt you, like, inside me. And of course, a fellow Canadian. I hate the cold. I know it's not the most Canadian thing to say, but I just really hate it. Damn. Damn. Wow. On the spectrum of fitness chart, thank goodness he's a little higher scoring than Greg Duzette and Jeff Nippard. And through my veteran eye, the not so good. Self-taught. I didn't really know what I was doing. Bad mobility, except he says it, not me. I have no ankle mobility. Oh, you're one of those. I am. We've shown before, he can't count tempo. But three sets of 10, we're doing with the tempo, so four seconds down, one second up. Four seconds down, one second up. Why do you suppose I just hurled a chair at your head, Neiman? The tempo? Were you rushing or were you dragging? Has very poor conditioning. And again, he said it, not me. Oh my God, that's so hard. <laughs> oh my God, uh, oh. Definitely not athletic. Up. These channel audits are about fitness education delivery. So hopefully throughout the video, there's something you might've gone, huh, I didn't know that before and you learn more about what you're missing from following just specific content creators. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Everything the light touches. Everything. None of this is my opinions. I'm not shitting on anybody. I'll eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. Okay, being the fitness sheriff, we're gonna slap some badges. We're gonna have a huge fitness entertainment badge, a very small fitness education badge. And unfortunately, when these fitness channels get so big, they end up getting thrown into chasing the algorithm. And you typically, when you scroll through all of their uploads, you see similar patterns repeating, 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 month after month or year after year. I tried Andrew Huberman's productivity routines. I tried the world's most physically demanding job. I tried the optimal human diet. All right, I'll give it a try. No. Do or do not, there is no try. My favorite thing to do is search a channel for the 30 day theme. I got shredded in 30 days. How I transformed my body in 30 days. I gained weight, so I committed to 30 days of healthy habits. It never called me fat, so I transformed it in 30 days. And I've preached it before, fitness for life mindset. The 30 day challenges are absolute garbage. It's way too short term to do anything that matters. You're gonna be focusing on your thousand workouts and a thousand more. That's a life pursuit. 30 days is a blip, 30 days is straining a muscle and having to recover. They don't make any differences. That's clickbait. You're gonna find it everywhere on the internet. It's trying, it's not doing. But fortunately, we'll collaborate so often, you see other realms of other sports on the full spectrum of fitness that we'll get into in a little bit, spilling over into his channels. Oh my God, 4.6 seconds. But he isn't an instructor in front of you teaching you um, fitness through the camera. I mean, this, this kid can't even train. You know, he's getting pointers from Greg. This is how inexperienced this kid is. You know? And it's fun. You know, everyone's gotta learn somewhere. You're seeing it as more of a side effect. Do you consider yourself a bodybuilder? Recreational bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. Natty? Natty, always. always yeah. yeah. A little bit of creatine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are you bulking or cutting right now? Cutting. You're natural or enhanced right now? Some Turk. Some Turk. <laughs> <laughs> wait till you see the research. I can't wait. We're gonna slap Natty Lifter badge with a question mark. Not Natty or not, not Enhanced Lifter. I don't get into this too deep. There's so many videos, do your own searching. Will makes his income on his muscularity, all right? When someone earns money based on their physique, do you think there is a chance they may be tempted to use anabolic androgenic steroids. But you can see he's clearly had a change. Started as a out of shape, chubby fat kid, got into shape and had a lot of moments of way more muscular than his softer look right now. These 14 year old, 15 year old kids out there, the ectomorphs, et cetera, are thinking I'm gonna you know, have Will Tenney's or Greg Doucet's freaking you know, supplements and I'm gonna get swole. You know, that's really, in my opinion, misleading. It's really misleading. 
he didn't know. Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh! So definitely, some things have been going up and down with fluctuations. So you can see here, this kid's just hanging around other steroid users. All right, this is just how it is. And all I gotta say, he's on the Gymshark team. When you're on the Gymshark team, you get that free monthly membership of some drug supply. They're highly sus. Take a look at all their influencers, very enhanced. And if you're wanting to be a Gymshark sponsored kid, why would you stay natty when all the other Gymshark crew are juiced out of their eyeballs? Going from fatty, to no longer natty. Okay, next badge we're slapping is the self-taught influencer. We've seen his before photos. Very out of shape kid, discovered weights, got fit, and started making videos. I didn't really know what I was doing. So although I put on a lot of muscle, I did put on a lot of fat as well. So I went from this, to this, to this, and now this. So it's safe to say I know a thing or two about gaining weight, losing weight, building muscle, and maintaining lean physique. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. A little bit of creatine. Okay. Part of his honest humility and the things we like about Will is he doesn't try to tell you he's a professional. You see him struggle and get corrected all the time by other professionals in videos. I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm rocking with the vapor maxes on squats, bro. Those are gonna pop. He's not the pro. He's learning as he goes. So maybe that's why he's so appealing to all of us. Hope I can do a little bit better, and that's all I can ask for. Glutes and calves, yeah. actually. The calves? Yeah. The calves are huge. Okay. There's two big muscles in the caps, right? If we pop up this pyramid of fitness education, this is a tier that all of us at some level will fall into. At the very bottom, the self-taught gym goer, okay? You will remain in this tier if you've never been coached, cued, or corrected. And that's not some gym bro coming over to say, hey, roll your shoulders back, yada, yada. You gotta be touched by a pro, told, mirrored, mimicked, uh, and corrected to jump up to the next level. I really, like, I, I actually felt you like inside me. The next tier up is the class goer or the one-on-one -on -one personal training experience. So now you're into an environment where there's a professional coach watching you the whole time. Hopefully your one-on-one -on -one personal trainer isn't a 24 year old professing the number one trainer in the USA on drugs and hanging out with guys like Larry Wheels who are just destroying themselves with one reps and injury. Um, yeah, hopefully you got a mature coach who knows what they're doing and is uh, properly trained and hasn't just trained themselves to look good, enhance themselves with drugs and then profess these things. Next tier. Okay, next tier is the continuing education courses. So you're joining specialty classes, you're learning full kettlebell course over a weekend, you wanna learn about oldie lifting, it's now a very specific small group of people where you're attaining skills that you need to go and practice more so on your own. You can't do a three day course and then call yourself a professional at kettlebelling and then try to teach that and instruct that to others. Now, all right, using, keep making sure I have a nice long spine. I'm gonna stand. Nice and tall as Okay, the next tier, the teacher, coach, or instructor, you can juxtaposition against the fitness influencer. Coaches, instructors are the people that are in the trenches, day after day, working a real career, seeing thousands of bodies move through classes. I've taught over 5,000 classes, versus I've seen these top Toronto influencers literally stand around in the gym and then plan one shot for their video and move on. We got a big difference of where you're getting your knowledge and information from. And that top, top, top tier is that OG educator, retired, old usually, their knowledge is in the mind, they don't need to profess and show um, and put on the front of what they used to be. I can make fun of Greg, you said all the time, but I said he's a master OG educator because he's been around for so long. Eventually he retires to pasture. Knowledge doesn't leave him, but the physicality does, and we don't hate on that. They've just climbed all the way to the top. More for trips, going on, on trips or whatever, daytime driving. Because they've been in this years and years and years and years. Okay, next badge. We don't have a medium king badge. It's short king or tall king. People hated when I labeled Greg Doucette a short king. You can't hate on him because he's short. The only reason we're labeling them is because of lever lengths and what you perceive on camera to your own body type. And again, I'm not saying these things, not my opinions. I think it was Zach Tellender said it. One pound of muscle gained on a five foot six frame is gonna be the same as a six foot four person having to gain 10 pounds of muscle. Remember the camera adds 15 pounds. That's why when you see Jeff Nippert on camera, he's only 180 pounds, but looks massive. And then you look at a guy like Zach, he's 250, 260 pounds, and he looks like a tall, lanky guy like me, right? So it's perspective. If you're gonna follow an idol and you think you might one day look like them, understand, are they short or tall? And what are your lever lengths and limb lengths like as well? Easy. Just 
doing one rep on the freaking jabroni machines. Long levers have to do way more work to lift less weight because leverage, short levers can do a lot more weight and therefore you just can't chase the numbers that uh, shorter guys will be chasing if you're tall. That's it. Okay, next is my favorite section, the full spectrum of fitness chart. This chart lights up anything you see on his channel. Thank goodness for Will, he collaborates so often with other professionals and other avenues of the athletic spectrum. Most of the time he's usually getting his ass kicked though and getting beat down from these things that he's not used to doing. <laughs> what do you got? Fuck, I don't even know. <laughs> this is like the biggest my ass is get kicked in a video like ever on the channel. Okay, let's break down this chart. A lot of red happening, but red doesn't mean totally bad. It just means you're highly specified into one avenue element or another. Will's got the bodybuilding 100% lit up. I think if you, if you look at bodybuilding, it's the easiest place where you can work hard and not have to really dive super deep into, and, and, and you can still kind of have that lack of care. He's got strength 100% lit up because that's a good carryover in powerlifting we know he's dabbled in. That's low volume, very heavy reps. So that's gonna make you very strong. Because of the collaborations, you see a little bit of hit, high intensity athletic conditioning stuck into there. Probably one of the hardest workouts I've ever done. I'm, I'm freaking gassed. Like I okay, and I blipped him up 25% for endurance because he is collaborating with other um, professional athletes that have way more cardio capacity than him because they don't specify so much in bodybuilding. And again, bodybuilding, you know, when you're 100%, we know you get too bulbous. Um, it's all show, no go. Those aren't performance muscles, those are show muscles. You're volumizing, there's no performance behind that and your cardio gets sapped. I've seen bodybuilders who give absolutely nothing to functionality um, and they, they're useless, you know? They're useless, they're just big dummy dudes like who, who can't move well, who can't rotate. They can't like, they can hardly walk for long distances, let alone jog for any sort of distance at all. So remember this chart's like building a character in a video game. It'll never let you 100% max out everything. If you wanna really go 100%, into strength in bodybuilding, you're gonna lose other factors. So you have to expect a bunch of red on here. I'd like to personally train to think you can be, you know, a little bit lit up in all the squares. So on any given day of the week, you can dabble and move around. You don't wanna specify so much if that's just not a career or um, personal aspiration. And again, um, in athletic terms, bodybuilding is absolutely not athletic. You just create your big self. You can have kind of a lack of care and do a lat pull down. Not much technique there. And if people ask, act like there is, well then it's kind of ridiculous. So don't think hitting the weights, getting big is actually a good thing if you wanna be you know, a, a trained ninja killer assassin versus the slow ogre caveman one, one trick pony. Okay, and again, this is in my opinion. We see this carry over into Will. He's destroyed and crushed the 500 pound squat. He's super strong, but he's a complete fish out of water when it comes to any conditioning or uh, sports specific elements. Fuck me, I almost broke my nose. I, I, I pride myself in being versatile. Now we've seen him hold the ski handles backwards because he's never been on a ski erg. Even more embarrassing is that coach didn't come over and correct him that he's been holding the handles wrong, stumbling on the platform, not keeping his, his balance. We see Matt Frazier shocked when Will doesn't know how to address a, a box jump. If I were to ask you to jump on top of that, where would, where would you jump from, your feet? Probably, yeah, here. Really? Yeah. No shit. Yeah or um, address a bar on the ground for a barbell clean. Just do, do like one or two reps and then we'll, we'll see what the starting point is. I don't even know what the starting point is. Again, limited spectrum, total bodybuilding strength, not into any of these other ones that you see red on screen. But admitting it and hating it doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it. You gotta go after it and do it. Not try it, do it. There is no try. And then his ankle mobility. If there's one carry away of this video, ankle mobility makes you an amazing squatter. I have no ankle mobility. Oh, you're one of those. I am. Well, this is it. This is my typical, ready? Mm. Oh, yeah. what, a, what a disaster. Everyone pop up and do this ankle mobility assessment right now. Kneel against the wall, put your toe against the wall and touch your knee to the wall without your heel lifting and then keep moving your foot away. You need to be able to get a fist between your toe and the wall and still have your knee touched to become a great squatter. If you're tight and you can't get there, you're forever gonna be loading your back and putting more sheer load into the spine because the ankle can't help the body move into its perfect center of balance. And then I can't tell you how to fix that right now, but look up ankle dorsiflexion exercises to increase range of motion. Ankles are 90% of the problem of people's crap squats uh, when we assess. 
You know, you see Dr. Mike in this video saying, oh, oh Olympic lifting shoes always uh, for the ankle mobility. Your mobility is crazy. Oh, thanks so much. Well, I'm cheating because I have weightlifting shoes on. Wow. Have you considered weightlifting shoes? I have them. For ankle mobility? Only weightlifting shoes ever touch my body. That just becomes a crutch. You know, people buying these slant boards or the wedges to wedge their heels up or do heels up elevated squats. You're just crutching a problem you have that you can fix easily. You're just not addressing the main problem. Okay, and wrapping up with the exercise vibe chart. This is the style of training you'll see on his channel. Unfortunately, again, for Will, we got a lot more lit up here. Way better score than like a Jeff Nipper channel or Athlean X, where they're so specific into just body, 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 body training. But I think rear delts are really important for a physique, and they're a muscle that a lot of new lifters tend to neglect. Far left of this chart, we got that 100% self-taught, you know, self-taught, self-journey. I used to be fat, chubby. Uh, fitness influencer, just a, a dude in his camera going through the gym. Young, dumb, full of not quite will, thankfully. That's more trend twins, juiced up way too young, um, suffer the consequences later in life, heaving weight and hurting yourself. Oh, Machine junkie, definitely 90% loaded. You don't see him like with kettlebells or different apparatus. Um, on turf, sprinting, athletic, agility, sports specific stuff, mainly 90% machine junkie or barbells. Kind of the same thing with the machine. You can try hard, but it's not an exercise because the machine's doing half the work for it. It's already stabilizing the weight, you're locked in, you're sitting on a Ferrari seat doing the exercise. You know, it's a very comfortable exercise. Uh, basic lifters is 50% because it's, again, basic. You, your entire workout's inside a gym on mostly machines. So you're not getting too creative with that or uh, expanding your horizons. Like uh, sitting on the preacher curl machine and doing a bicep curl. There's not much skill involved there. The 30 day six pack ab squares get lit up because again, he's forced into algorithm chasing being such a big YouTube channel. No, he can get these big views out of these types of videos, but that's kind of like the athlete next as well. No shirt, pants on, never see his legs. Six pack, six pack, six pack videos forever and forever. Doesn't let the subscriber learn anything new. They're just getting the same regurgitated content. Right below it, 90% algorithm square. Again, he's for entertainment. He needs to hit those videos that are entertaining for us. So he's gonna go after the algorithm, not truly about the best fitness education out there. Although again, I love him. He does some good videos. Okay, that tempo square gets a little 10% blip because we know he's doing tempo on his channel. Except I found the one mistake where his four seconds was 1.5 seconds. So maybe he needs a professional coach screaming in his ear to be coach cued and corrected to learn what a proper second is. What does that say? Quarter note equals 215. Count me at 215. A one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Jesus one, two, fucking three. Christ! Everyone I train when they do tempo never goes slow enough. Your brain will always speed up your count when you're under stress and duress. The nutrition, lifestyle, wellness squares are always lit up again, unfortunately, because it's algorithm chasing. You know, tried fasting for 30 days, tried uh, cold plunging for 30 days. Uh, these things are on the channel, so you, hey, you, it's good that you get to, to see it, but he's not committing to it. He's just dabbling for a little bit. Six uploads over the course of five years on your channel when it's just regurgitating, regurgitating the same thing. You know, a thousand workouts, you gotta do tons of variety. You're gonna be so sick of one move, you're gonna try them all, and you're gonna do them over and over and over again. So it's a huge uh, journey, not just picking, yes, that will be my move. So science-based lifting is a blip, but also it's algorithm chasing, so watch out and just get your own variety in there. You know, a lot of people say, but you can do horse cock serious feel with science-based training too. And this is where the whole freaking land of confusion sets in. And then longevity, he does have the videos, themes of the fasting, the cold plunging, the cold camp, you know, trying to better the body. Oh, you hear that crack? Yeah. Ow. Well, point your chest you toward the chest camp. <laughs> Be well, mindfulness, um, it's on there, it's good. So he gets a thumbs up for that. And again, we're not hating, we're appreciating. So just remember when you're watching these videos, take your blinders off. Is this video being made to chase the algorithm, get clickbait views? Or are they truly trying to send you a fitness educational message? You gotta understand what you're seeing and respect that there's maybe a lot more that you're missing that you might have to go out and seek to further educate yourself, climb up that pyramid. So does Will get a spot on the super roster of fitness influencers? A lot of influencers couldn't even make a competitive ref softball team. So I'm gonna put Will more closer to this army lineup of uh, super skilled soldiers but maybe a little too selective and specific in what he's doing, but I love the collaborations that show, again, his humble, on his side, suffering at what he's not good at. I don't know why I'm almost crying. He at least is brave enough to get into that world and try it out. So that's him well on his way versus a lot of other guys that are just so set in their ways. Take science-based advice from me, a science-based lifter. And listen, like yeah. people kind of have this like caricature of what science-based lifting is. So again, lift the blinders off, expand your fitness horizon and educate.